Hey, what's up, Red Cat Racers? This is Chris G with Red Cat Racing, and in this video, we are going to demonstrate how to adjust the slipper clutch from your Gen 7 Portal Axle Upgrade Kit, and we're also going to show you how to lock it out. Adjusting the slipper clutch, you're going to need a 7mm socket, T wrench, and or a open end wrench. So basically once you have the slipper clutch installed, you're gonna be able to adjust the nut on the end of the shaft to tighten or loosen your slipper clutch. So if you rotate the nut counterclockwise, you're gonna notice that it's gonna loosen and the washers are going to uh, begin to create gaps between them, thus decreasing the pressure on the plate. If you rotate the nut clockwise, you're going to notice that it's going to tighten down on the washers and it's going to compress them against the plate, reducing your slip. Set the slipper clutch level. You're going to need a 7mm socket again, a T wrench, or an open wrench or a driver. So, the recommended slipper clutch setting is 75% throttle. You can check this by holding the car still on carpet with a fully charged battery and gradually applying throttle. You should hear the slipper clutch begin to slip at approximately 75% throttle. So, when making adjustments, it's strongly recommended to wait at least 30 seconds between tests to allow the motor to cool down. If the slipper clutch begins to slip after 75% throttle or doesn't slip at all, loosen the M4 nut approximately one quarter turn and then try again. If the slipper clutch begins to slip before 75% throttle, Tighten the M4 nut approximately one quarter turn and then try again. So the goal of this process is to get the slipper clutch to slip at about 75% throttle or three quarters of a trigger pull. As you can see, we're only at about 50%, so we're gonna tighten it up and then we should be good to go. Locking out the slipper clutch. Tools needed, 7mm socket, a T-wrench, or an open-ended 7mm again. So basically in the lockout process, all we need to do is remove the slipper pads and the washers and leave the M4 lock nut and the metal plates. The metal plates are the same shape as the slipper pads themselves, and you'll notice that the spur gear has that stop sign shape that the metal plates are going to sit in. So we're going to remove the washers. We're going to keep the metal plate and we are going to simply remove the pads off the spur gear. So once you have these taken out, you can reinstall the spur gear onto the transmission shaft and the metal plate is going to sit in that same socket. Once you have everything lined up, the teeth mesh back together, install the second plate and then reinstall the M4 nut. You won't need the washers at this point in time. You can use them, but it's not necessary. And once you have everything tightened down, it just acts like a solid pinion to spur gear, thus eliminating the slipper clutch.